Welcome back to Shadow Run Hong Kong. So last time, started this mission here to find out who's been killing the Wampawan uh, elders. Now I had hoped to uh, finish the mission all in one episode, but it was just taking uh, too long. I usually like to keep my episodes under an hour if at all possible. But, you know, I'll, I'll let it go a little over if I can get to like a better point to leave off. I'll perfectly finish a mission or whatever, but you know, the episode got up to about an hour 20, and who knows, maybe it's going to be over in 10 minutes, maybe it's going to last another hour, so. I cut it off there, um, we talked to a bunch of people, did some investigating, um, seems the last guy, uh, was it Tong or Tang, I forget which one, one of them is still alive, the other one just died, got killed, looks like he didn't see it coming. Some weird things happened a while back. The, the HKPF was led into um, the the Wampawa Gardens, and then they had a shootout in here, and that was it. And it's kind of weird because the police force is usually not let in. So, why did the elders let him in? Uh, that one time, and what happened? The elders are not telling me everything. They didn't tell me about Magpie. I have to convince them to give me the key. Um, so yeah, there's some... Um, I don't know if it's one of the other elders that's killing the... Uh, one of the living elders that's killing him. Or if one of the elders is protecting the person that's killing them. Or hiring them. Or what. But... Someone, if not all of the living elders, knows that something is up. Um, or they, they they know more than they're letting on. Uh, let's go into this parking garage. Uh, there's a gang in here that sells BTLs. BTLs is one of the things that's been that was missing out of uh, Magpie's shop. Um, looks like the other cracks, you know, a lot of electronic stuff was taken too. Um, Hopefully I don't start a battle here. I would prefer to handle this with words we have here. Now there's no way to get past here. I can't sneak past them. There's stuff to investigate here. Blood stains and blood drain. But, um, yeah, hopefully this is, uh, I could... I could get the jump on them, I think, with the holster. Oh, I can't even put this. But yeah, hopefully I can talk my way through this. I don't really want to fight these, this gang. I mean, I'm not scared that I die. Who knows? I don't know how powerful they are, but eh, I prefer to avoid bloodshed. There we go. Red Spear Ganger. It's far enough, guy. The woman hefts her weapon, tossing a knob toward the gangers behind her. This is our turf. If you're looking for a fix, you, you're welcome to trade. If you're not here for business, clear the hell out. You try and wander around on our turf, we're gonna have to air you out. So what do you say? You looking for a little pick-me-up? A little nitro to give you some pep? Maybe you want you want some chips? Take the edge up. You want it? I got it. Well first let's see what she actually has. Ah, uh, standard. Standard stuff that I don't care about. And I look around this garage. Man, are you deaf? What the hell did I tell you? Uh, I don't have either of these evidence. No, you goddamn well can't wander around their turf. The ganger shakes her head and mumbles something about idiots with no memory. Who else gonna ask anyone? What happened in the fight here? As far as I know, some police showed up looking for somebody. They got in here, all of them got killed. Whoever they were at after was long gone by the time we showed up. Used to be a lot of Wampwans living here. They all cleared out, muttering about ghosts and shit like that. Have you heard anything else about the burgers? Nothing much. I tell you what, though. I've got a guy named Kang, and he was... At and he was down in the storm drain system last week. Something was moving down there, big, too, man size, but it wasn't speaking any language Kang understood. Kid beat feet back here as soon as he could. Dumbass dropped his storm drain key on the way out, though. 
You want to go looking for whatever it was, you'll have to get a new key from somebody else. Kang stole his from a city worker. So who else might have a key? It's a guy named Porter Land who's got keys to pretty much everything. Some, yeah, I know where he is. Somewhere between a cop and a handyman. Yuan Yuan also mentioned some elf woman with crazy colored hair who managed to scam a key. He said she hunted uh, para critters down here. Devil rats and shit. Yeah, I know who she is too. Some of these BTLs you're selling look an awful lot like they came from Tom's shop. Yeah? So what? Why do you care? So if you stole these from Tom's, maybe you saw something I can use in my investigation. Yeah, I guess that's fair. It's like this. Broken Thumb Yan was talking, uh, was walking down the street and sees this guy going to Tom's joint right at closing time. Tall guy, hunched over, had this shitty gray rain poncho draped over him. Now Yan figured that that was weird as hell, so he posts up and waits. He figures the guy will come out soon, because Tom's closing up shop. Nothing for 15 whole minutes. The guy comes out, hustles down the street with nobody saying boo. I figured he was waiting for an ebb in the crowds. Yuan sees some blood smeared on the door though, so he goes to check it out. Inside, total carnage. But you know what? Tom's not going to be using his gear anymore, so the hell with it. Yuan jacks a lot of it. Uh, well, I think it is pretty cold, but I'm gonna. I'm trying not to uh, cause trouble in business. Is business? Damn right it is. That's all I know. The guy had to be the killer. Tall, gray rain poncho, hunched over. Also smart about how he came and went. Alright, so I need to get me a key. So there's Porter Lamb. And there is uh, Rainbow. Let's talk to Rainbow first. I'm not going to confront the elders about the stuff I heard about HKPF yet. No need to let them know that I think something's not on the up and up here, although when you're talking about Magpie, probably already tipped them off. Hey, good to see you again. Something else I can help you with. You have a key to the storm drains? Of course I do. How else would I get down to look for strange creepy crawlies, eh? Why do you ask? Can I borrow it? I want to investigate something down there. Hey, sure. What's your step down there, though? These drains are a mite bigger than people would normally expect. Rainbow tosses you the key. Best of luck. See you later. Cool. She was very cooperative. Alright, now where are these stores? Do I. Is that back in the parking garage? There's storm drain somewhere around here. Just take a quick look around before I head back down into the parking garage. Ah, there we go. Storm drains. Alright, let's see what's that. There, I go across here, 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 and here. Uh, let's see what's around this corner first. Okay, I can go around further here. Oh, body parts. Wow! <laughs> Is you really took the long way around. Nice pathfinding there. The disgusting pile of sticky human remains smells strongly of blood in the first stages of decay. The arms, legs, and organs here are heaped together like stacked firewood, leaking blood and gore across the floor. The parts contained therein appear to have been sliced away from the parent body rather than torn or pit. Judging by the clean edges of the cuts, the blade used to sever these parts is extremely sharp, 
and do the same blade that um, cut the back of uh, Tong's neck. This is a whole world of messed up, Rubik. Isabel takes a moment to suppress a wretch. You think the killers stash these here? They're stacked. They've been organized. This is our killer, all right. Looking closer at the pile, one part stands out. It's a severed forearm, and it's covered in tattoos. Words in Slavic in a Slavic language are shining, and a shining lighthouse adorn the forearm. And ring-like images are inked on each finger. On the back of the hand, there is a skull inside a square. This arm belonged to a boy. These are criminal tattoos. The lighthouse shows he tried to escape from prison or crime. The words say all police are dogs. The school inside the square means he served the prison term for robbery once. Uh, what's a boar? A boar is a thief. The body the zakonia is the name of the organization. Thieves in law. They have strict codes and police their own. But they don't sever arms and leave them in a pile of war. Despite the darkness, you see something glitter at the edge of the train. Looking closer, it appears to be a necklace chain of some kind. It's become caught in the drain's grate, narrowly avoiding falling down the deep pit. Let's take it. Lifting the necklace out of the drain, you turn it over in your hand. It's a simple silver pendant on a chain. The silver pendant depicts a long-tailed bird in flight, a magpie. Mm-hmm. And also in this room. So that confirms Magpie's dead. I mean, I've kind of known that for a while now, I think. Magpie was probably the first victim. And that's why they did the whole try to clean up the scene uh, mess with trying to get all the blood down the drain, but realized it wasn't working perfectly well, so then they maybe took the approach of completely just obliterating the body on the scene to try to throw off uh, scent and confuse investigations. Oh, here we go. Um, so, yeah, before I go in there... Now, as you round the corner, you hear voices speaking just loudly enough for you to make out coherent sentences. The speakers are definitely not local. They speak with a slightly Slavic accent, and the clothing is heavily armored. Around them are a number of crates and boxes, all mostly filled. It looks like the group is packing up. Yaroslav says the boat will be ready tomorrow morning. He's gotten everything arranged with the port authority. We move the goods up to this warehouse. He'll hand the loading to them onto the ship. We get paid right at then and there. York spits on the ground. I'd be glad to be done with this filthy place. I did too. I hate having to hide these damn, in these damn drains. It stinks down here. I can hear the devil rats running around the walkways. It is a mess, and it is disgraceful. We shouldn't have put up with this bullshit. And Alexander still isn't back from his little trip. We'll have to leave him behind if he doesn't get back soon. No, Galina. Until Andrei says we're in the clear from triads, we can't be seen with the goods on the street. They find us, we go back to Vladivostok in sausage casings. Those red dragon Mudaki don't screw around when it comes to protecting their turf. Who knows? Maybe Alexander was stupid and they caught him. Either way, we'll have to lug this crap through the trains for a few weeks. Several boxes near the two women bear a distinctive label. A magpie and fly, same emblem you saw stamped on Magpie's equipment in the shop. The orc woman sniffs the air suspiciously and her eyes dart toward the dark thumb you stand on. Before you have a chance to get out of sight, she locks eyes with you. The orc lifts her chin and she regards you, cracking her knuckles. What have we here? Curious little pest. Come looking for things that don't concern him. What do you want? What, what do we do with pests, Galina? Galina puts her hand on her shotgun sparrow. We break them, Vasilya, and then we hammer a spike through each of their throats. 
so anyone who sees their bodies knows not to meddle in our affairs. I suggest you stay where you are, yes? I'm not here to meddle in anything. I'm just looking for a serial killer. Well, you found some friend, us. You think you can just walk out of here after finding us? Think again. Look around you. These storm drains act like the residence cha like residence chambers. The exits on the streets will be like a uh, will be like the mouth of a trumpet. They'll care if they hear gunfire on their turf. Galina laughs. You think I am stupid? You think you can fast stop me with some stupid? He is right, Galina. You know how sounds can echo through these tunnels. Shit. Galina lowers the shotgun, though her posture remains wary. You don't care what we are doing. Not really, no. So what do you want from us then? You took Magpie's keycards, didn't you? Yes, we did. Alexander took one earlier. He said he wanted to sweep the stock room, see if there was anything worth stealing. So he crosses you up here. We don't have time for this. We have to move this gear. You want to play detective? Go right ahead. Alright, cool. That goes up to Wampoa Garden. And before I do that... Cool, avoid it if I can't go any further this way? No. Alright, well that, well, that settles that. I'm going up then. table's crude construction, an artfully laid meal awaits the owner. Several small dishes are filled with pickled vegetables, while a larger plate is arranged with long slices of raw meat. The meat is pale pinkish white, like raw pork, and is covered in a light soy marinade. Is that human or metahuman meat? I don't, I don't know if human meat resembles pork or not. <laughs> it's not something I'm into. Poking at the raw meat, you discover that it's surprisingly tender. What's more, it has the faint aroma of marinade, and is deliberately prepared. No, I'm not eating it. Uh, just in case that is uh, human or metahuman meat, I'm not, um... Yeah, let's... Yeah, let's, let's not. This box is packed full of odds and ends. It nearly overflows with a collection of knickknacks, souvenirs, and assorted personal effects. There is no rhyme or reason for the collection of items. They appear to have been thrown in haphazard. Among the contents are charms for various temples, a wooden mask, and a paper fan. Now let's check out the mask. The wooden mask is extremely light. It's been painted a pale white, and the surface is almost as smooth as porcelain. Delicate features are lifted and lifted eyebrows are matched with bright red lips and delicately carved teeth. Teeth have been stained uh, deep black. Is it like a kabuki mask or something? The small charms are square claw packets, each approximately one inch wide and three inches tall. They come in a variety of bright colors and are embroidered with characters for posterity, peace, wealth, and protection. Inside each appears to be a folded paper prayer or fortune written in Japanese. Unfolding the fan, you tilt it up toward the light to examine it. The image depicts an East Asian city from the 19th century or earlier. Curved roofs at sunset beside a deep blue river. Two ships sail down the river, which, in turn, which is in turn spanned by a long wooden bridge. In the foreground, laborers carry buckets along the shore as a as a man on horseback rides in the opposite direction. 
In the distance, a pair of large red buildings dominate the city skyline. One large temple and a five-tiered pagoda. As you step away from the box, you hear a slight click in the distance. The sound of the door's latch shutting. You are no longer alone in the stock room. Oh yeah, Gaichu, huh? The ghoul's blind eyes search back and forth as it reminds you. It cannot see you, but you have a sense that it knows exactly where you are at all times. Ah, a hired gun. No doubt brought to bear against me by the Wampuan elders, a means by which they can lift the curse plague them. I salute your tenacity, but I wonder, will you hear me out before raising your weapon to kill me? You're cool and you're talking. Yes, I'm not only talking, I am reasoning as well. And since you have not attempted to kill me, your own higher faculties are engaged. I am a curiosity to you. The bull bears its teeth, breath rasping over them as he inhales. You wish to know not only what I am, but what I have done, and for who. You may call me Gaichu. But you're a serial killer. No, I am an assassin. I sell my services. It is true that the, the kills look like professional jobs. I am an assassin. I sell my services. I take no joy in the death of the Wampuan elders, but their deaths were required. You were hired to kill them. The ghoul shakes his head, resting one hand on the pommel of his sword. Not as such. In fact, the elders were the ones who ret retained my services. This affair started simple enough. As you may surmise, I am not someone who can be seen in public without great risk. The Wampawa Garden, Garden are an excellent place to hide. No police or triad presence, and minimal interest in things that lurk in the shadows. Unfortunately for me, Elder Naga discovered me through communion with her spirits. Rather than kill or chase me away, she came to me with a proposition. Naga and the other elders were having problems with one of their number. An elder named Magpie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had not been holding many of their had been holding many of their plants hostage and would not budge. They could not remove Magpie, however, because her services were too useful to the Wampuans at large. Nagu offered me payment to dispose of Magpie, and I accepted. You didn't clean up all of her blood, and I found some in the drain. Ah, unfortunate. I had thought I was careful enough. Having it on my hands must have obscured my senses of smell enough that I missed the last remnant in the drain. I disposed of Magpie's body by emptying the blood into the in, in her bathroom. Then I cut her up into more portable pieces. Those were placed in a plastic tarp which I took to, uh, to the storm drains and hid. Gaichu nonchalantly waves a hand, his tone flat and unconcerned. It's unfortunate, but my survival depends on consumption of raw metahuman flesh. Letting such nourishment go to waste would be a foolish error. But why kill the other elders then? I contacted the elders, not in person of course, and they arranged to exchange payment. I assumed that since the, uh, the job was done, the girl would be a woman of her word. Baron his teeth. Gaichu hisses his next words across clenched teeth. I was mistaken. I arrived at the nearby parking garage the elders had told me about. They cleared out the other Wampuans under some pretense, though I'm not sure what they used. Oh, and that's why they left the police, and they wanted the police to kill him and tie up the loose ends. The elders never showed up. Instead, se instead several members of the Hong Kong police force arrived. They were more heavily armed than usual, so I suspect they knew something of my nature. I heard about the fight. You expect me to believe you took out a police squad and won? Of course. I have survived as a ghoul for some years now on the streets of Hong Kong. If that isn't evidence enough of my tenacity, I doubt any words I could say uh, to you will change your mind. A betrayal of that sort cannot stand. Not only was I not paid for my time and effort, the Wampuan elders treated me like a common animal, and I am so much more than that. Reputation is everything, and I have none. I had hoped to build a network of contacts so I would be able to continue finding work. But with that treachery, my hopes were dashed. I decided to become the monster that they feared. 
I have become the master that they treated me as. One by one, I have eliminated them. They know how to contact me and could have ended their nightmare any time by making amends. I would have asked for more money. I would have asked for more money, but I would have ceased my hunt if they did not. Instead, they contacted you, no doubt asking you to eliminate me where the police had failed. So I ask you, what now? What will you do? Will you attempt to finish what the Wampuan started? Or will you treat me with the same humanity I treated you? Uh, let me ask you some questions. Very right, well, what would you like to know? Did you eat the elders? Some of them, not all. My condition requires that I consume raw metahuman flesh. I do not require a great deal to survive. Perhaps three or four pounds per week. Consequently, there is vastly more supply than demand. Why would they have you killed instead of paying you? Any number of reasons. They are notorious cheapskates and will always try to save money when dealing with outsiders. It could be their natural inclination toward profit. They may regard me as subhuman and therefore unworthy of respect. It could be that they felt I was too dangerous to allow to live. It could even be that they simply did not like me. The net result is the same. However, they reneged on a deal with broker and attempted to have me killed. A message must be sent. Blood must be paid. As they have hired you to kill me, they have obviously not learned their lesson. So if I let you live, what will you do? Kill the rest of the elders and anyone else they sent to exterminate. It's a matter of survival. Should I ever have the opportunity to work uh, freelance again, potential employers need to understand the price of betrayal. These murderers are my curriculum vitae in revenge. Oh, what then will you do? How will this story end? Oh, I can, I can recruit him. Yeah, what the hell? I've already got a, I've already got a motley crew. Um, yeah. A curious offer. And what of the elders? Will you allow me the satisfaction of killing them? I want to see what they have to say first. Hmm. I will counsel you not to believe their words, but you have the sound of one who is wary as a matter of course. Very well. Let us wait until a bit later in the night. Most pedestrians will be off the street and it will be easier for us to approach the Wampo Owl without being noticed. Oh, nice. I even have him in my party. I don't think this is going to end without bloodshed. But at least I have lots of cover here. As you approach, Elder Nagur's eyes widen. Her mouth falls open and the veins on her neck bulge. What are you doing? You brought this thing into our home? Quick! Kill it before it kills us! Porter has his pistol warily, but does not aim it at anyone. Yeah, I have to say, this isn't a good idea. Why the hell is a ghoul in here and why is it wearing armor? Calm yourself. I am not an it, and your elders know this intimately. That she bears his teeth in a rictus grin as he turns to face the good. Good evening, Elder Nugu. I can smell your fear, and I'm glad of this. It means you're learning the price of betrayal. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is going on here? Can someone explain to me why the ghoul is talking? Gaichu had a contract with the Elders, and they betrayed him. You dare to accuse us of conspiring with a monster and covering it up? You're insane. The very idea is preposterous. Porter nods at the Elders, looking back at you with a weird expression. I am interested to hear what kind of evidence you have to support this theory, Rubik. As far as I can tell, this monster killed Tong and the others, and that makes him a threat that should be eliminated. The elders hired Gaichu to kill Elder Magpie and make it look like she disappeared. You 
who eat this vermin, this creature that feasts on metahuman flesh, that kills and dismembers our tribesmen? You are a naive and foolish man if that's the case. You just spits on the ground and will guide you. What proof do you have that Magpie is dead? Nigga, please. It matters where, where an elder is accused of breaking our law. The other elders generally judge them. It matters where all of them have been accused. I am authorized to act as a judge. Make your case, Shadowrunner. I found Magpie's necklace in the storm drains. Porter takes a moment to examine the necklace and he nods to you. This is definitely Elder Magpie's. If you found it in the storm drain, that's suspicious, but hardly proof on its own. Of course it's not proof. The number of things lost down in storm drains in Hong Kong must number in the tens of thousands per year. I'm certain that necklace isn't unique either. There was a large amount of blood in her shower drain. So what? Perhaps she cut herself and washed it cut off, or perhaps you are mistaken about it being blood. You're simply guessing as to what happened. That's true, it's a guess, and even if it is her blood, that doesn't prove that the elders hired this ghoul to kill her. Porter gives Elder Ip a sidelong glance. The elders have always protected Wampua Garden to the best of their ability. She hasn't been seen in a month, not by anyone. She wouldn't just disappear like that. That may be unlikely, but it's hardly impossible. You haven't established that the elders were involved. All you've done is make suspicions about it. What proof do you have that we hired and betrayed this creature? I won't sit by and listen to idle accusations without any kind of concrete evidence to back it up. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police force? How do you mean? What does that have to do with the elders and the ghoul? You Wampuans don't allow police inside the area. Why make an exception this time? The police were polite and asked their permission to enter. They were hunting in non wampuan That was reason enough for us to allow them in. Porter considers this for a mullet and then shakes his head. That doesn't add up, Nuka. Why would the police ask us for entry now? They've never been polite before, and they've always tried to force their way in here. It just doesn't ring true to me. Did you ask them to come in order to hunt down this ghoul? Preposterous, Porter! You know our, what our community is like. We wouldn't lie over something like this. This ghoul has been lying the entire time, trying to cover his tracks. He's still, he's still brutally murdered several elders. That's true. Those murders were vicious and cruel. Porter fixes you with his hard stare. I don't see any way to explain that away. This ghoul is a monster for how he killed Tong and the others. Tong wasn't tortured. There was no astral residue of pain or fear. He didn't even feel the blow. That's correct. I struck a single blow while his back was too. His death was instant. Regrettable that he had to die for your folly, Nuga, but necessary to protect my reputation. Nuga glares at Gaichu in stony silence before addressing Porter. You cannot believe what these people say. They are not to be trusted. And even if this is true, he still killed Tong. Porter looks back at Nuga, his expression flattened without emotion. Maybe so, Nuga, but a monster would not take Tong's suffering into account. He may be a killer, but he's not heartless. Tong's see the scene of Tong's murder, like the others, was a deliberate sham. It was made to look more horrific than it was. I believe you. The blood smeared on the walls, the removal of the skin, that's a scene designed to evoke horror, not the scene of an actual fight. Elders, what have you say in response? This is a farce. We have dedicated ourselves to protecting the Wampuan tribe and everyone who lives in the Wampua Garden. Do you really believe outsiders and a monster over our word? We who have only tried to end the killings? You have been duped, Porter. You and this Shadowrunner. I concur. Porter, you knew, you know me. You know the kind of person I am. I wouldn't I wouldn't be party to the killing of another elder. I can't believe we're even entertaining the notion that we have to defend ourselves. We should be disposing of this fool instead. Tag narrows his eyes at you, hissing. If you think I'll forget this, you're sorely mistaken. I will not tolerate this kind of elf insult.
Magpie's gear was missing, obviously missing. Why didn't it tell me that? You would have had to have noticed a Magpie's shop is locked up. Why didn't you want me investigating? Pure supp supposition. You think it proves something that I didn't notice equipment was missing? Magpie's shop is always a horrible mess. Tang, you did a full inventory of Magpie's matrix service. You assured us everything was running fine and you'd be able to continue her work. I find it hard to believe you missed something was as obvious as missing equipment, especially while searching your stock. The others were all too happy to have the Red Spears move into the garage, almost like they wanted to keep anyone curious about the fight away. That's right, Kip. You, you even told me not to go find out what happened with the fight. You said the Red Spear gangers were moving in and to leave them alone. Why would you tell me not to look into it? I was only trying to protect you from the Red Spears. They're dangerous, which is why I wanted to deal with them directly. No, that's all I got. All right, I think I have some idea what's going on here. And what do you believe the real story is? The waters are muddy on this matter. The ghoul seems to be telling some of the truth, and I respect that. But the fact remains, he is a dangerous creature who killed many of our number. Our law is clear on this. He must die. You seem to be blameless in this movie. What do you say to this decision? I'm not gonna let you kill Gaichu. Then you too must die. If the Wampons rent their weapons. I'm not in the greatest spot since I'm in melee range, but I do have a shotgun. Which is damn good in melee range, or I could cast some spells. Let's look around. The Raptor should probably activate his uh um, Drone. Done. All right. Kasha has two action points. Got a single bullet. Uh, pistol does a lot of damage, and he's got melee system, but you'd have to move for that. Let's just use the gun. That melee system, melee damage, and kneecap, and his gun, single shot, aim shot, target head, target leg. not going to kill him unless he criticals. 46% critical chance. Alright, let's have someone else move. Maybe I can kill him with a single blow and save an action point. Oh, he's got a combat drone. Uh, that belongs to... Hmm, I forget which one of the elders was the uh, rigger. Anyway, I want to kill Aang. Alright, so, let's get, can I get Gaichu over here? I could. Oh, wow, he freaking missed. 10 damage, that sucks. Alright, I'm gonna have, uh, Oh, this might be the perfect time to have his uh, use a grenade launcher, right? Mm, how big is the explosion? I think this might hit me too, though, if I use it. 
Oh man, it would probably get all these guys. 8%. Screw it. I did the job. It hurt me too, but I think it was worth it. Because man, these dudes are hurt now. I'm almost tempted to do it again. Uh, let's use some other attacks first. Alright. Mana boss, perfect. Right there. kill all these guys. I might just have her... I mean, I'm going to get damaged in the process, but you know what? It might be worth it. So let's have Ractor. Alright, let's see what it does. I'm going to go for it. Wow, they all survived. Just barely, but they survived. That's a bummer. Alright, let's kill it. Really, any one of these guys other than Naga is going to die. As long as I hit him chance. No need to heal myself. This battle's going to be over in a matter of seconds. Just power bolt this guy. Done. why I'm not even bothered getting into uh, cover because I can end this soon enough. 6%. Out of ammo. That would be grenade launcher. 9%. Damn. Perfect. Almost dead. All right, Kostya, 83%. This is an almost guaranteed hit. This should finish it. As the elders fall to the floor, you stop and survey the, survey the carnage around you. It is accomplished. No more betrayers allowed. No more worried that others may think they can take advantage of you. Lead the way. I look forward to our new business partnership. Sweet! I got me a street samurai. Listen, you know, if you're gonna hire an assassin, you better pay up when the job is done. That's just that's just shameful to try to back out on your uh on a uh, contract like that. Had you made me an assassin, but in a way, so am I. I mean, I prefer not to kill if I don't have to. I, I did my best to talk my way through that, but I kind of knew it was going to end in bloodshed one way or another. Is he going to have to kill Guy to kill the others? So it's unfortunate that uh, Porter had to die too, but he wouldn't back down. And uh, yeah, it's what it is. Miss anything? Is there anything else for me to go there? That's it. You're about to leave this location and return to Pio. Pio. Continue. Mm -hmm. 
The MTR rockets noiselessly towards Hio along the edge of Kowloon Bay. The black water glitters in the, in the night, the light of a thousand reflected storefronts. Kaiju stares sightlessly out the window, one hand pressed to the glass. The Wampuan elders are dead. They forced your hand and paid the price for it. Their story was a, cl- was a cleverly crafted lie, meaning you put the ghoul, meant to put the ghoul to death for their greed. But was the trade you made worth it? The uncertainty of that choice is as clouded as the sky above you. Yeah, I wonder how Auntie uh, is going to arrange the gate. Karma. Your comic chirps. It's kindly Chen. Hello, Auntie. Hello, my darling. There's a thrill in her voice that, that you haven't heard before. Come to see me at once. I have something I want to show you. Your crew is already here. I'll be there right away. Very good, my sweet. Very good. I'll see you shortly. Hey, when Auntie Chen tells you to come right away, you come right away. I'm not making any stops along the way. Um, the only thing I'm going to stop to do is maybe spend my karma. Mess. Stop. Get up to spellcasting six. I can get another spellbook slot, which would be very useful. And I'd only have two points left, which I could probably use for biotech. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Alternatively, um, I can get another point in range combat, another point in quickness, and another point in dodge. Another point in range combat, another point in dodge, and have one point left. Get another point in body. Have two points left for biotech. But I really want that extra spell casting slot. And another point in body. What have you got for me? Got you, sir. As you walk through the Mahjong parlor, parlor, you see your crew waiting for you. Clearly uncomfortable being so close to the triad boss. Then you see why. Kindly Chang's cheek are flushed and glowing. She's already hit the bottle pretty hard. Ah, Rubik, you're here. Excellent. Yes, Rubik, it is good to see you. They both have expressions that say they'd rather be anywhere else. So let's get to it, shall we? You said you had a lead on team? I did, and I do. Kadmi Cheng takes out her PDA and gently places it on the table in front of her. The wiretap we placed on the police force has borne fruit. Her mouth breaks into a wolfish grin. Her eyes take on a feral gleam. She appears fueled by alcohol and vengeance, a hungry beast on the hunt. My people have delivered a snippet of the recorded video calls between the plastic-faced man and the chief inspector, Cray, of the special beauty zoo. Whoa. This should be good. Shouldn't take a seat. Unfortunately, it's only a snippet. There were some technical difficulties uh, with the tap. She glances at Bao, who nods back at her. The person responsible has been sacked. <laughs> By sacked, probably not fired, probably dead. <laughs> Cheng reaches out a lacquered fingernail, hunts for the button she's looking for, and stabs it in victory. There's a loud crackling noise at the beginning of the recording, followed by a squelching squeal that makes Gaba cover her ears in pain. When the video recording begins, the man's voice sounds far away as if he's talking through a thick pane of glass. The woman's is louder. Closer. Say that again? There's something wrong with this line. 
I said, my client isn't interested in hearing more excuses, Inspector. That's what I thought you said. I'm not making excuses, mister. I have a department to run. Not for much longer. These two Westerners aren't bound. They're linked to this Raymond Black somehow, and my client wants them out of the circulation immediately. Ah, so he's just a middleman. The two runners are his accomplices, too. The little orc and the dwarf with the cyber deck. Gobbit looks at Isabel, wide-eyed and swallows hard. Isabel winks back reassuringly. I'm aware, Inspector. Thank you. We don't know how much any of them know, and my client is adamant that the risk can be mitigated immediately. I've already made this to the... I've already made this the SDU's highest priority. If Josephine wants more resources on it, I'm going to need allocations from elsewhere in the department. That is a problem that can easily that can be easily dealt with. My client wants this over. Now. No more excuses. No more fuck ups. No more cops floating in the river. Candy Chang smiles at that and pours herself a shot. <laughs> I love Audi Chang. Tell her we're redoubling our efforts. Uh, that sounds like a line from uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. The Emperor's on his way. We'll redouble our efforts. Very good. Dead or alive, we bring them to me. My client requires my personal verification that the threat has been eliminated. Hang on. This line's getting worse. A sharp crackle in the reporting ends. Kindly Chen picks up her PDA and puts it away with a smile. She unscrews the cap of her bottle and pours herself a shot with a flourish. That's the guy we saw in our surveillance footage. The one who killed Raymond Black. She leans in to the PDA. That plastic face looks a lot cooler close up. I think it's kind of pretty. That video doesn't tell us much. I mean, we already know that there's an APD on us. We're all sure of... We're all, all we're sure of now is that the man with the plastic face is definitely working for someone else. This shows a key. Is that all we have, Monty? First name? It's not just the first name, Gobbit. It's the first name. Josephine Sang. She's the one pulling the strings. Kindly downs her shot and slams the glass upside down on the table. That disease riddled dog fucker. I should have known it was her from the beginning. She drums her fingers on the table in front of her. And she had nerve to call down the heat on my runners? On night chart? Oh, that scabrous fossil's going to pay. This woman has enough power to order the HKPF to hunt us down? Mm-hmm. Chang makes a wet, hacking noise in the back of her throat and spits on the floor. She's the CEO of Sang Medical Services and a member of the Hong Kong Executive Council. Her face turns to a mask of disgust. Josephine Dog Fucking Sang. CEO, huh? What do you know about her? She was Hong Kong's philanthropist of the year in 2054 and 2055. Children's hospitals, homeless shelters, food distribution centers. Good causes, and they kind of get good PR because people are too lazy and myopic to look for the real people doing the hard work. The face-to-face -face with the poor work. Don't be so cynical, Isabel. Aunt Cheng smiles at her sweetie. Coming face-to-face -face with the unsanitized for video poor is distasteful here. You know that. Her face gets stung. Beyond being a CEO and a philanthropist, I also know that Josephine Sang is a lying, conniving bitch. Sounds like you two have a history together. Whatever gave you that impression, my sweet? Her wolfish smile returns. Yes, my darling, I don't like Josephine Sang. I'm going to fuck her up. I'm going to fuck her up bad. I like the way you think, Poppy Chang. Oh, this should be good. It will be delicious. And I may explain why it's Sunday, but not today. She picks up her bottle of swill. Its turpentine fumes drift your way. But well, when I finally get her, you'll be there, my darling. 
I'll make it a pardon. What is saying medical services? Josephine's baby was a B-rated corporation before she married into the Sang family. But after she fought for and won the contract to rebuild Kowloon Wall City, their fortunes rose high. They began a rise to power that eventually landed Josephine on the executive council. Wait, so there's a connection between Josephine Sang and the Wall City? Yes, the same place Raymond Black hired my runners to take them. I've already connected the dots. I don't know what it means, but it clearly means something. Oh, uh, so I bet there is another force fueling her. Um, maybe pulling the strings underneath right, that helped her rise to power. In exchange, this force gets to operate in the walled city and do stuff that is causing all the bad key. And of course, this works out for um, the same medical services because, well, if you have a place that's all downtrodden and filled right with the disease and all this other stuff, then you're going to have a lot of clients for your medical services. What do you think the connection is between Josephine Sang and this plastic case now? I don't know yet, but I will. He called her his client. That may be some sort of lead we could follow, so maybe he's like a hired assassin. Chang nods at Wu. A glance lingers at his biceps at a moment before continuing. Right now, all we know is that he is her instrument, the one who killed Raymond Black. Raymond's not dead. Yes, you may have mentioned that before, Gun Show. She smiles at him reprovingly. Regardless, the plastic face man is our best lead for figuring out what's going on. Let's cut to the chase. What's our next step? I know who the executive council is. There's nothing we can do to touch Josephine Sang, as much as I hate to admit it. But the plastic face man is a different story. He's a third party operative who's been careless, and he'll live to regret it. The little black eyes turn stone. For a while. If Sang thinks she can take out two of my runners and get away with it, I'm going to have to explain things to her. She pulls out a thin black cigar and runs it beneath her nose. We're going to find the plastic face man, and we're going to hurt him. We'll hurt him until we know everything he does. And then we will use that to strike back at Josephine Sang. She lights her cigar and takes a deep, deep pull. You will have your vengeance, and I will have my own satisfaction. She turns away and picks up the bottle. Now get out. I have work to do. Oh, Auntie. Alright, let's go to the mission computer and claim payment for my run. I wonder if I'm going to get paid for this uh, mission I just did, considering I killed the elders, who were the ones that... Um, that hired that they were the ones who put up the contract, so there's really no one to pay. My payment is probably just getting Gaichu on my team, which is cool because, you know, samurai dude. Your workstation and mission computer. Cool blue tones, the workstation main menu, pull the screen. And got three messages. Well, there's notes. Ah, from uh, Crafty. Hey, Ruben, here are the notes you asked for. But before you dive in, a heads up. They're a complete transcription of that list from my mother's journal. As in, they're the thoughts and ramblings of an insane woman. It's not an easy read. Another dream. This time it was a mere figure. A shadow. A wraith. Faceless. But its voice. The wind did not speak. And when I woke, I was inside my home. Though I had been, though I had been in the city just moments before. Where am I? A weight dropped from me. I felt the words of the wraith in my skin, in the tips of my hair. I saw its mouth in my mind's eye. Rows and rows and rows of lies. Warning. My hand was to the paper before I even knew I was writing. I wrote the words, these words. They cannot lie. I added it to my list. Evening. Was it a king I saw? Was it really there? I was in the city, I'm sure of it. And how did I end up here? Was I carried back? My list is growing. 
soon with this knowledge, I will stop things. Step forward is a step backward, and a step backward is a step forward. Each trait has a name, a true name, and a false name. Knowing your true name is knowing their weakness. To call them on their lies is to make yourself invincible. They will still try to eat you. They fear the feathers of unborn chicks. Kings must be one or the other. That is, of the negative world, or positive. But positive doesn't necessarily make them good, nor negative make them bad. They simply are. Once a deal is brokered, it cannot be unmade. So maybe Joseph, he brokered a deal with a Yama king. Kings and the planets are closely connected. When nearest the sun, their power wanes. When farthest, it grows. There is only one rape. There is only one rape. They may, there may be two rapes. There is most certainly only one rape. They must follow the laws of the universe. Rules set in motion. So wait, they're, they're most powerful when nearest the sun and least powerful when away. So at night, that's when you're most furthest away from the sun. They must follow the laws of the universe. Rules set in motion long ago. Should they concede defeat, all is lost at it. Kings are the rules of us, of us all. They take from us their life wealth and with it parts of our souls. Do not give them what they seek and you will, you will be their match. They cannot lie. Morning, I made breakfast. I fell on the floor in the shape of my death. All the truth would be a few and my wrist. It's all or nothing. They are all liars. Another dream. It was in white. It was in white space. I could taste the color as if it were air. This time, no voice. Just rose and 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 rose. A mess. I know. It's not a whole lot of significant material other than what I already picked out. But even that is con contradicted with Mom's notes. Everything should be taken with a grain of salt. In the meantime, I keep looking into it. Good luck on your end, Pratt. Auntie Chang and Joseph, from Gala. Hey, Seattle, I think I can add a little context to that thing between Auntie and Josephine Tseng. You know, the thing that makes Auntie hit, her, hit the sauce and talk revenge. This is a combo of stuff I've heard and stuff i put together myself, so your mileage may vary. For years, the Yellow Lotus acted as tax collectors within the Walled City. Since the Walled City was built by Josephine Tseng and the Yellow Lotus was run by Auntie Chang, they must have had a working business relationship, for a while at least. From what Nightshark told me, he was a favorite, you got that, right? Auntie was known as a real up-and-comer back then. She was on the fast track to be the next Yellow Lotus 438. That's a big deal, that's a big deal gig, Seattle. Money and power galore. Now, you need to know that there were a lot of tri uh, triads and corks going, doing this in the Walled City. All sorts of stuff. Sometimes they work together nicely, and sometimes people get bloody. The way I heard it, Auntie came up with some sort of grand plan to consolidate business in the Walled City. The power would be split between the Yellow Lotus and Sang's company, and everyone else would get a cut out. If her plan worked, Auntie would rise in the Lotus like nobody's business, and just Pete Sang would make long bank. There was a catch, though. In order for the plan to work, both both would need to jump through a lot of hoops. There'd be street-level maneuvering and power plays on Auntie's side, and blackmail and negotiations on the corporate level from Josephine Sang. My info gets sketchy here, but when I pieced together, Sang went behind Auntie's bank, back and took her plan to her boss at 438 named Wong Lun Fat. They cut kindly out of her own plan. Why did Sang do that? My guess is that she saw Auntie as some sort of threat. People in the know say that Wong Lun Fat is weak and greedy. She can, uh, she can be manipulated if her palms remain well greased. Long story short, power was consolidated in the Walled City. Just like Auntie Plant, only she didn't wind up getting any of it. Climb up the lotus ladder came to an abrupt halt. She's still a straw sandal, just like she was before Sang backstabbed her. And now she's stuck in Kiwi like a flying amber. I'd be pissed too if it were me. More notes. Ruben, while I was blazing through my mom's journals, something stu struck me. We spent so much time reading about the Walled City that we haven't thought to look at it. 
to paint a picture with the information you gather. So I contacted a friend of mine, Riley, a decker of an asked to post some data for me. Her results were surprising, but what it's worth, I think we're onto something. Riley dug up records and of things like reported sleep disturbances, psychotic breaks, HKTF responses, the cult activities, etc. She found that they all formed a classic bullseye heat pattern around the wall city. She couldn't find any data from within the wall city itself, but the outside data was still enough to establish the pattern inside the slum. This has got to be more than coincidence. It's too unnatural to be attributed to anything else. I don't know what it means yet, but I've got my nose to the books. I'll let you know when I find out. One other thing, the last email I sent you, the one with my mother's notes. I went ahead and reread it, and that took me back to the source text, and I was able to pull something else from her list. This isn't much, but it seems to be pretty consistent across the ramblings. If I'm reading it right, it's kind of like a set of rules that govern the interactions of the Yama case. It's surprisingly bureaucratic if I'm reading it right. The most interesting tidbit is this. There's something here about the kings being unable to back down in a deal. Yeah, I didn't hear that much out. It's like if they give an inch, they forfeit everything. From what I'm reading, the Yama kings have their own code of laws, but they don't have to follow them unless you know how to call them on it. Oh, gotcha. They can lie and cheat so long as you don't call them out on it. But if you do, then they are bound by their laws. Like, they break the rules all the time. If you can't cite chapter and verse on which rule they're breaking, it doesn't matter to them. Approach from a place of wisdom, though, and you can bind them with their own laws. Anyway, that is all really arcane stuff, but I think there might be something here. I can't vouch for any of it, obviously. When you take a step back, it all sounds like crazy time. But one thing that I can tell you for certain, my mother believed it was true. If anything else comes up, you'll be the person to know. Alright, All right, let's try to get... Well, first check the DBS, see if I got payment. Three fifty. Yeah. Is there anything I have to post? I think I picked up anything to post. Yeah. So. Alright, see if I can get pay, uh, payment for the garden worms. Probably not. Who's going to pay me? I asked you to solve a problem, and your method of solving it is to kill the people I was doing a favor for? I have half a mind to throw you in the goddamn bay. Still, the Wampawans are now more afraid of me than ever, and money started flowing again, so I suppose that's something. I've attached your payment. The Wampawans made it explicitly clear that you wouldn't, that they wouldn't have paid at all, except to ensure you never came back to the gardens. Next time, try not to fuck the job up so much. I may not be as forgiving. Hey, I got a thousand uh, million out of it. Cool. All right, cool. So next time I'll go get some shut eye and make my rounds around Eoi. Talk to Crappy again see if there's anything new in store, see what I can afford, all that sort of stuff.